Hello and welcome to my channel for premium content concerning education and parenting. So my name is Ronke Posh and welcome. You are welcome. So I want to do this really, really quickly. Um, I saw a couple of um, messages, DMs as you guys call it, um, on my Instagram. And I just thought to myself, this is the most popular question I get asked. It's like one of the most, one of the most popular questions I get asked. How do I find a good school for my child, a good nursery, a good primary school, a good secondary school. So I just thought, okay, let me create an ebook. And I did that many, many, many years ago, which I tend to share with people it's in my bio. It's always been something that I, I give freely. But I just had this urge to um, have it as a video. Um, so you can see my pretty face. <laughs> Maybe not, but um, to have it as a video so you, we can connect because I see that you're really burdened and troubled. Now, if you're in Africa or you're in Nigeria, ah, uh, well, I do when it comes to schools. I run a school, but well, I do uh, because well, I do. <laughs> There's trouble. Okay, let me get serious now. So, when you're so, I'm just gonna be looking here and from here and uh, mm, 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 because that's the actual, the, that's the ebook. So I'm just gonna use it quickly to as a point of reference. Now, when you want to choose a school for your child, now it depends on if it's a primary school, a secondary school, and whatever it is, you need to focus on your child. So people ask me, um, can you tell me a school that is a good school? Now, a good school can be great for you. Um, it can be great for everybody else and their children, but it might not be great for your own child. I hardly find people it's not even I hardly, I've never had anybody say, which school do you think is good enough for my child? Which school do you think is good enough for my child to attend? And that really should be the way that it should be. Which school is worth having? This is my quality, solid child. Which school would take care? Which school is deserving of my child? And that's the way that we should look at it. Is it the right fit for your actual child? Now, um, a lot of people look at technology, and we know that a lot of people look at ambience, technology, trips to Dubai, trips to this and that and that and that. It's, I mean, this video would help anybody, but it's specifically targeted at Africans, so particularly Nigerians, because we know the education system is generally getting there, generally. I mean, some people are doing a good job. We're doing a good job at, like, the Parch School. So schools are, some schools are trying, but we know that the, the quality of teachers in the marketplace, there's a problem. There's a real, real problem. Problem and we really should be concerned and alarmed because of examination malpractice that occurs there, and they bring it into the, into the classroom. The examination centers where people cheat for their children, and all sorts of things happen. So yeah, so don't go and don't start thinking about all those cosmetic things. While they are great to have and nice to have, um, they should not be the core of um, looking for a school for our child. Yeah, get it. So, um, COVID-19 happened, a lot of schools started using technology. A lot of schools like Lopash, we already were using technology uh, for things like uh, computer-based um, tests, you know, quizzes and little, little things here and there. But we had to really, really leverage and use technology a lot more during the COVID-19. And we didn't stop a beat, we didn't stop for a day. When people were closing down, when the Lagos State government told us to stay at home and do nothing, we couldn't do that because it was not um, the thing to do. And eventually they caught on, everybody else caught on. Those very, very few schools continued with their children online are reaping the benefits today. So um, technology is good. It's nice to have teachers that, have, that are able to use technology. It's nice for it to be implemented and infused into the curriculum. It's a lifestyle. It's not something that the children should be having access to maybe um, occasionally. It should be something that they use often. So they, they have Wi-Fi access. There should be Wi-Fi restrictions. But those ones are technical. As long as they have access to technology and they're using it, that's very, very good. Yeah. Um, Location of the school. Now, the best thing ever is for your child's school to be right near your home. When my daughter was in primary school, her school, school was walking distance from the house. Can you beat that? And she got about 7, 7.30. She was still getting to school on time. And that's how life really should be. However, she's in secondary school now and her school is miles and miles and miles and miles away. In the morning when she leaves the road, she's driving, we're driving against traffic and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get home. And coming back, it takes her maybe an hour 20, an hour 30 minutes. And now that is um, a lot of roadblocks on the road and thankfully she lives in a matter of days. Um, we now have this 
uh, Victoria Garden City traffic that is causing a lot of problems and takes her two, two and a half hours sometimes. And because she had writing her finals, so now days where she doesn't have to go to school, she just studies from home because being on the road means you're wasting five hours of your time, she's tired and all sorts of things. So it's not best to have the children far away. Having said that, you might not find a school that is close to your home. Hmm. What do you do then? So this is the this is where planning is very very important and the risks taken you have to be able to plan and know the kind of risks that you're willing to take with your child because you're not going to settle for any school just because it's convenient um especially when you're you have little babies in fact at any point in time convenience is not always the thing so we put our daughter in a school that is quite far from the home but it suits her um, it suited her skills they were able to they could serve the things that her core skills because she's an athlete so they were able to do that so you have to consider the location because if you're always in traffic the child will be tired you're going to be angry all the time it could affect your mood your relationship with your children you don't want that at all then we talk about the teachers the teacher quality um when you go for an inquiry so i always tell people when you come to my school you come to Lepage and you speak to me I know my onions, uh, if I can say that so humbly by myself. I'm going to convince you. I'm, I'm a trained and experienced public speaker. I'll, I mean, I'll do a good job to convince you. Don't you think so? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, I'll just wait for you to subscribe. Oh, have you subscribed? Okay, okay, okay. So, teacher quality. So, try and speak to the teachers in the school. How to, you know, experience the teacher. A couple of them. How do they speak? How do they look? How, how do they dress? You don't even have to go once. You can go to the, for the inquiry more than once. Um, how do those teachers dress? How do the students or the pupils, what, what do they look like? They look happy? They look confident? Do they look like the child that you would like to have? You know, the outcome, the finished product, what you're seeing. Do you want your child to look like that? Um, what matters to you when it comes to teacher quality and the um, output of the or the product of the school, which essentially are the children. Communication. One of the reasons um, Le Poche School did not have challenges with parents, particularly during the COVID-19, was because of effective communication. So uh, COVID-19 or no COVID-19, it's just nice to be able to communicate properly. And you find that a lot of teachers will have spent 10 years, 15 years, 20 years in the classroom, and then they just move out of the classroom and then they start a school. And starting a school is a business except if you are in a, a non-for-profit. It is a business. And you must be able to manage um, your communication with, your, with the people that come into, you're not gonna be talking to children. You're not gonna be spending time with students or teenagers or uh, uh, preschoolers and you're going, uh, telling an adult, oh, good girl, good boy. No, you don't want that. So um, communication skills, quite important. How are they communicating with you? How are they communicating with the pupils? How, what are their communication channels? You know, um, how are they going to reach you? Some schools still print out um, paper or tell the children to write in their notebook and take things home. And some parents are at home and yes, it sounds like cake, I know. And their parents are busy or at work or whatever the case may be. So is it going to suit you? So are they a listening school? So we have here, um, a Lepoche where a listening school and it's important we listen and respect the opinion of the pupils, parents, teachers, and friends of the school, and even the people that work with us. What is the curriculum like? A lot of people ask about curriculum. What's your curriculum like? Does it have onion and tomatoes inside? What is it? Does it have uh, Singapore noodles or oh, lasagna in it? What is in your curriculum? You see, what is a curriculum? A curriculum is an experience. Yes, you may not have heard it defined that way. But it's start to finish what they're going to infuse into your child and how they're going to do it, the methodology, the content. You know, how are they going to do it? When they say something is a British curriculum, what is British about the curriculum? When they say it's a Montessori curriculum, what is the what is Montessori about the curriculum? Is it understood? How deep is it? If it's a blend, what blend is it? Oh, we do the Chinese and the Singapore maths, and then we do the American and then the British curriculum. Understand it. Which curriculum is do you prefer as a parent? If you don't know anything about it, then you can ask. Maybe I should do a video about the curriculum. That would even be a refresher, because you know, when you teach, you learn 
twice or more. Someone like me, I talk about it all the time, so you can just imagine. So the curriculum is a guide as to what you'll be taught, what will be taught to your child. You want to have an idea about the content, the approach, the methodology. So investigate before you invest. Investigate before you invest. This video is getting really long, so I'm going to rush now. Outdoor space, does it matter to you? One of the reasons I took my daughter to the school that's far away because they had a lot of outdoor space. They had the uh, uh, big pool, they had um, sports ground. Uh, they said they were going to have a theater, um, but from start to finish, she's leaving, as I said, in a matter of days, the theater was never completed. So what promises are they making as also? Um, so outdoor space is very important to me. It may not be important to you. Some schools don't even want children to go out because they don't want them to fall down and they don't want to have to worry about the risk. But play is the work of the child and the children really must go out and play. So to talk about being a tech savvy school, Literacy, reading and writing. Reading and writing and speaking is a challenge for many Nigerian teachers. Now, when I say that, it's obviously a general statement, but it is a challenge for many, many um, people to write. We do interviews. We interview. We will check 100 CVs. You might not be able to find one person. You might not find any, you know. Um, People can't really spell. You find a year four child can spell and speak and write better than many teachers. Um, putting sentence structure, sentence formation, and things like that. You know, creative writing. They struggle. Look at the notes. Check. I mean, just be detailed. This is Nigeria. You can't just say, oh, you can't use the same yardstick that you will use in, say, um, England here. You can't. Not to say that it's perfect abroad. However, it is better because at least the quality of the training of the teachers and the rigor is still there. But in Nigeria, people can buy their certificates and can do anything that they want. So be careful. So reading and writing skills are essential life skills. These, there are other skills which complement this, such as having great communication, problem solving, critical thinking, negotiation skills, creative abilities, all these and more should be developed in the children. So you want to know that what, are, what is in their hidden curriculum? What is it that um, they're teaching the children over and beyond the English and the maths? What is it that they're teaching the children? What are their values? What are the core values? What is the mission of the school? What are those things that are important to the school? Say at Lepoche School, integrity is important. We're child centers. Fun is important. Fun is so important. Everything we do, our lessons, we try to infuse fun, infuse fun. So it's so exciting and the children love it. Um, that's what we like to do at Lepoche School. Um, you want to think about security and child protection, safeguarding as well. You know, we hear about cases of abuse, cases of rape. When it comes to secondary school and um, you're talking about cases of um, children having sexual um, acts or immorality or kissing or straffing, this is 2022, they still call it straffing. I don't know when you're watching this video, um, snuggling and doing all sorts of things. It happens in a lot of secondary schools. It's coming down to primary schools, but right now it happens in a lot, a lot, a lot. <gasps> lot of secondary school so get used to it um you might not you uh you, you can say some people say oh i did by the way so i can't put my child in x school because oh they i heard they were kissing and they caught some children now i i don't know the secondary school they do not cut children's um kissing day in nigeria if your school they never you know people's in especially secondary schools I'm not counting primary school now. Secondary school in Nigeria, and you can beat your chest, chest that they were not kissing, strafing, using foul language, and being rude to each other. It's sexually immoral, you know. If you can beat your chest, please, I want to know you. I want to give you an award. Please, take my award. What will be the award? Take this plaque. It belongs to you. It is yours. If you can brag about it. <laughs> But I don't think so. I don't think so. Because that's what they do at that age. Having said that, it's not to justify it, but it's to say that a lot of the teachers also find it hard and the leadership find it hard to curb such behaviors. Because even when they tell children or for simple things, their parents come into the school and start harassing. So that's another thing you want to find out. What type of parents come to the school? A lot of these so-called elite schools, high-profile schools, highbrow schools, a lot of them have money misrode people, people that don't, they, like that, they don't, have core values you know that children do anything they send um they send drivers up and down they are rude to people they don't greet you know and so many of these schools they they win competitions scholarship x y and z they do all those things but the children don't have manners they can't even use their five magic words there are five magic words that i know please excuse me sorry thank you and the last one is pardon me simple things that they can't use it 
So you really want also want to know the kind of parents. And some people go to schools because they want to network, they want to meet other people, now land contracts for them, all those sort of things. The priorities are wrong, so they don't focus on the children. And then you find that the children are just doing whatever it is that they want. What is the um, child protection? What are the policies like? You know, anti-bullying policies. All those. There's so many policies. Policies are like. It depends on the school, hundreds and hundreds. What is the code of conduct? Just there's usually a detailed code of conduct, a parent's guide, and there's also a brief code of conduct that you can look at and know that uh, you have this feel. You know what are the rules, the regulations. You know what other things do they do as a school? Um, try and find out those things. Uh, we are going. Go with a notebook. I mean, I had Choma, God bless her, and she had a parent. It was a parent here who passed on, and she even taught me. You know, from by me observ observing her, you know, I could see how in intentional she was. She had a spreadsheet with names of schools when she came for an inquiry and she had the names of the school and all the criteria and she was checking which one ticked, which one ticked her box, which one rocked her boat. She pretty much was doing that and then she gave it a score at the end of it and just how she chose the poor school. So you might not want to use a spreadsheet, you may not be good at Excel or whatever the case may be, but at least you can have a good open and What's my notebook? What's my notebook? I don't know. Okay, that's my notebook. You see how I love sparkly things. So this is my notebook, and you can just have a pen, put the schools, draw some lines, and figure out what you want. Also have your questions there so you don't forget the questions that you want to ask. Don't go there and be saying, "I do have white children there, do have Indian children there." It's good to want to mix, but let's get our priorities right. You can have schools that have a core black children. And I, it depends on the angle in, in which the parent is asking um, the question. Some just want diversity, and some are just insecure and just want, you know, they want to touch your hair and just. Uh, so, I'm just telling you on the back end, um, find out, find out these things, you know, because things are happening. Um, so, I hope with this few points of mine, I'll be able to uh, not confuse you, but convince you that. You should do a thorough job when it comes to searching for a school for your children. Um, don't go for the aesthetics. Um, a lot of people choose schools because ask, they ask their friends and they just take their children there. They don't do the research. A lot of people, that's not lying now, come on. How did you choose the school for your own older children and stuff like that? Don't let's not lie to each other. We might have made those mistakes, but as we move forward, let's not make the same mistakes and let's share this video, let's subscribe to this YouTube channel, you know, encourage me um, so I can continue creating videos. I should really be doing other stuff now and I'm going to be doing other stuff now. Um, but just like, go right the girl and hit the subscribe button. I hope this helps you. If you have questions, drop it like it's hot. And if you have video ideas or that relate to parenting I um, or question that relate to parenting or education, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So I'm Roque Posh and I'm out of here. If you want it to this place, God bless you. See you later. Like a